Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today, I'm going to show you the fastest way to earn money in Gran Turismo 7 so you can go buy that $3 million car you've really been looking at. Let's go talk about it. All right, so the place you're gonna to wanna to go for this is in your world circuits. You're gonna to go to America. Now you have to be, you have to complete at least menu level 37 to get this, but then you can go to Fisherman's Ranch and you have the Dirt Champions one lap race for $65,000. And with the 50% clean racing bonus, it comes out to 97,500. Now you will need dirt tires on your car as well as uh, a GRB car, but by the time you finish menu 37, you will have been awarded several GRB cars. Um, so choose whichever one is the highest PP rating, performance point rating that you have. Um, but the best one you can get in the game is this Audi Sports Quattro. You should get this as a prize car from completing the menus normally. Um, if for whatever reason you don't or you don't have it, just use whatever the highest GRB car you have is, and then head over to the tuning shop, buy some dirt tires to put on it, and buy the high RPM turbocharger. So I'm going through here to show you that these GRB cars already have most of the upgrades already purchased and installed for them, but you can buy the high RPM turbocharger for $18,000, and that will give you a lot more horsepower, which is good to have as an extra advantage in your races Additionally, I would recommend that you also buy the Nitro system because it will come in handy just by making things more convenient, especially if you ever have any kind of like slip ups during the race. It's pricey, but you're gonna be earning so much money this way that you're really not gonna mind. So once you've got your car upgraded and you're ready for the race, go back to Fisherman's Ranch and jump in the Dirt Champions race and get ready to, to race around and around to make money. So. Each lap, this is a one lap event, and each lap, once you kind of get used to it, but just really in general, will take you a little over three minutes and 20 seconds thereabouts. And if you win, as well as don't contact the other car, uh, it'll give you a little bit of leeway, but in general, don't contact the other car, then you will get the $65,000 uh, champion's fee as well as a 50% bonus for having a clean race. So clean race applies specifically to not running into your opponent. And when you do that, you will earn $97,500 for just over three minutes work. Um, and then you can loop again and again to earn as much money as you want as quickly as, as, quickly as you can. So I'm gonna show you one race through here. Oh, I'm gonna show a couple actually, but this first one I jumped into, I'm in the Audi and I'm racing against the Ford. Now there are a variety of cars um, that can spawn in as your opponent here. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how you can help choose which one you want to race against. Um, but in general, especially um, once you kind of get the hang of this, it won't make a big difference who your opponent is. Some are better than others, but in general, you should be able to win. So what I will say is that you need to make sure that you're extra cautious because again, part of the efficiency here of making money is getting that clean race bonus. So passing your opponent can be a little bit tricky and, and you want to make sure that you're not too aggressive when trying to pass them because causing that contact will cost you your 50% race bonus, which is going to really hurt the amount of money you can make and the amount of time that you're spending doing this. So. You have plenty of time in these three minutes to kind of follow them around the track and look for a good opportunity. I'm gonna point out one of my favorite opportunities, which is actually coming up at this part of the track, but you'll learn as you go through this again and again, your favorite places to pass, your safest places to pass. Um, this big turn right here leading up into this straight with this crazy jump is my favorite place to pass. They tend to run that wide, so it's pretty easy. However, the problem with this straight here is that there is a bit of a nasty jump um, right through here. So this is the angle that I would recommend you try and take, but regardless of what you do, it can be a bit of a mess. So don't freak out uh, if you don't nail that jump, um, because as you'll see in this race, I still managed to come back, win, and get the full race, uh, the full race amount. So 
you'll you'll learn some of the things in this track. One thing that I will recommend for the jumps in general, several of these jumps are pretty straightforward. That one that I just went through, accepted. Um, where basically just line up as straight with them as you can. Here's a good example. And right before you hit the crest, I recommend hitting your brakes. If you don't, you'll see what I did there. This was early on. Your nose will go real high in the air and it'll make it harder for you to see where you're going as well as landing. Um, in the second race that I'll show you, you'll notice that before you hit those jumps, if you really mash your brakes, it'll shift the weight of your car forward. So instead of launching nose skyward when you go over those jumps, it'll keep your nose down and make it a lot easier and more controllable. Again, you'll get the hang of this, but just some tips I've learned in the couple of hours I spent experimenting with this to try and make sure I had as much information as I could for you guys for this video. If you just floor it over these jumps, you will you will get a floaty front end and that can make things a little bit a little bit nutty. But again, as long as you don't run into the opposing car, um, you know, you will still get the race bonus. The game will let you get away with light taps, but I would still go out of your way to avoid them as much as possible because, again, you don't want to risk the full race amount for this. That's the most efficient part of it. So there you'll see, three minutes, 26 seconds for that lap. This was pretty early on, um, but that's about right. So the $97,500 there. And actually, if you see, if you just click through this, and then skip through the replay. Um, the amount of time it takes to loop and just go to retry is about four minutes pretty much on the dot. dot. So you can click on start there. Um, so between the loading time, the start time, the lap time, it is pretty much four minutes round trip, which comes out to 1.46 roughly million dollars per hour, which is not too shabby. Now, here you'll see me kind of backing in and out of the race. If you exit all the way out of the race to the to the uh, race selection screen and then go back in, each time you do this, it will randomly select a new opponent for you. So you can basically do this until you get the opponent you want. Um, like I said, once you kind of get the hang of this, who your opponent is doesn't make a big difference. But I will say, from my experience, racing against most of the cars that you can come up against. The Mitsubishi Lancer and the Subaru Impreza GRB rally cars are actually surprisingly, as some of the most famous rally cars, they are the slowest. Um, so if you want, you can do what I'm kind of showing you here, which is I went in and out because for my testing, I wanted to make sure that I ran against as many of the cars as I could. Um, so that time I was leaving until I got the Subaru. I got the Subaru and then this race is against that Subaru. So if you have a particular car you wanna race against, you can do that. One thing I will point out about the Subaru and the Lancer is because they are so slow, you will have to be extra careful um, behind them because as you can kind of see here, they run slow enough that it can be, I found myself running into the back of them a lot more often than I did the other cars just because they would slow so much through the turns that I had to be extra cautious. Your overall lap times against these cars won't be so much slower that, that it's really costing you money to choose the slower cars. It will make it just so that it's more forgiving on mistakes and so that in general, they can be easier to pass. Um, you'll see in this run, I also have installed the nitrous on my car. So I can use that uh, when there's an opportunity to pass, but uh, mainly I use the nitrous towards the end of the race to maintain a lead or if I've made a mistake and I need to come back. Um, but you'll find that it's kind of helpful. For those of you who aren't aware, it is clicking in on the right stick to use the uh, nitrous boost, um, R3. And essentially you have, you you really <laughs> won't run out of it. I run, uh, you know, with, with assists off in a manual transmission. So nitrous is a little trickier for me to use because I have to take my, I have to use my thumb that I use to shift the car to also use the nitrous. So I'll use it basically to run up to the top of the gear that I'm in. So if I'm in third gear, uh, the amount of time it takes to accelerate to the top of third gear before shifting is a lot faster when you're running the nitrous. So basically I upshift, hit the nitrous, upshift again, hit the nitrous. Um, and basically it just allows me to accelerate through the gears faster, which can be helpful. But here again, you'll see my favorite passing zone in this wide turn and then trying to come in uh, and use this angle to hopefully not completely screw up this jump, but this jump is particularly nasty. If you get lucky, you'll get okay through there. For whatever reason, the computers are basically flawless at that jump every time, but, but the latter part of this lap from here on gives you plenty of opportunities to use the nitrous, which is nice to have. You don't need it, you can, you can still catch up 
um, and run the race perfectly well from this point without the nitrous but it's a nice little a little safety to have and and especially if you manage to really make a mistake and you really need to chase them down at the end it can be a good little a little bonus to have so here i was a little bit further on you'll see before the jumps i'm i'm hitting my brakes and keeping the nose a little bit more down um there wasn't a huge great example but you did see that i hit the brakes there so the things to really keep in mind if you're struggling with the dirt rally is treated a lot like a road race in that you should still try and break in a straight line before you go into turns and then not be braking as you're turning because you'll find that your car handles a lot better if you're not trying to turn and brake at the same time and it also brakes a lot better um, so that's easy to kind of lose track of when you're doing a rally race where it feels like you're sliding all the time anyway so you might as well just turn and brake all at the same time but the same basics of driving apply here in that you should try to brake leading into your turns in a straight line and then accelerate through um, while not braking. It just gives you better traction, better braking, all of the above. So as we come through to kind of the end here um, of this race, you'll see that once again, got the uh, full race amount. Another thing to keep in mind is if you do make a mistake, slam into the other car, don't get too discouraged because as long as you win, even without the race bonus, it's still $65,000. So that's good enough for three minutes of work. I wouldn't recommend restarting a race just because you get a bump because it's gonna cost you more to restart than it would be to just finish it out, take the 65,000. Um, if you run a clean race but get second, you get like $56,000 and change, which isn't obviously as much as 65. So if you find yourself behind and you have to play dirty to win, it's still better to win than to come in second. But the gold, the, the what you're really going for is that full clean race um, and it'll help you earn money. I was showing an example here. I had a couple of Aston Martin invites, which means that I have a limited amount of time to go in and buy these cars. Um, so that if you have something like this come up, this can be when it's a good idea to be able to grind for some money. So if I need to get, you know, between these two cars, like four and a half million dollars, the amount of time it would take normally racing in the game, doing normal events would be significantly longer than you know, for four and a half million dollars, if I'm getting about a million and a half per hour, right? I'm talking about three hours of rally racing, which is still fun. It's still a fun uh, little race to run um, to be able to get enough money to grind those out. Or what would it cost? 40, 50 bucks, uh, like a lot of money in microtransactions for that. So this is really an effective way to do that. I'm gonna show you a fun clip of this turn here again, um, where I managed to, like I was really trying to, okay, if I hit this angle right and I just go full beans, Maybe it'll just kind of work out and I end up kind of <laughs> literally flipping the car over, which I've honestly, I don't think I've seen that in a Gran Turismo since like Gran Turismo 2 with like the Suzuki Escudo being able to fly. But um, another reason I tell you, like, don't get discouraged. I flipped this car over like that. <laughs> um, I did not get the clean race bonus. Uh, I don't know if it was right there or somewhere else in the race. Maybe it was later here when I was trying to catch up where I made some contact, but uh, I still ended up coming back uh, and winning this race. So I still got $65,000 for that, even though I managed to flip the car all the way upside down. Um, so I'll show you at the end of this. Uh, I went through and watched the replay and caught the, the, the third person action replay of, uh, of the car going upside down in case you wanna see that. But in general, that's it. That is, that is all there is to getting the money that you need to in this game. This, as of right now, you know, we're like a week into Gran Turismo, but uh, Gran Turismo 7, but as of right now, this is the fastest, most efficient way to earn money. $100,000 essentially every four minutes isn't that bad. I mean, when you're talking about grinding three hours for a $3 million car, that may sound like a lot. Oh, there was the contact I got trying to catch up. Uh, that may sound like a lot, but think about if you want to buy a Ferrari, you know, you 15 minutes, you know, or less of running this race and you've got enough to buy a 300 plus thousand dollar car. Um, that This can just be a very useful tool if you just want to grind out some money pretty quick. I got the pre-order on this game, so I started out with over a million dollars and that's really carried me through most of the games. So I've been able to buy stuff without worrying about cash, but you will find a time when, uh, when cash is probably a little bit tight or you have maybe a limited time purchase on something. Um, and this is a really good way to get a lot of money in a short amount of time. So. There was uh, all my tips and examples for how to get through this race, how to do well. Here's the replay of uh, me going full beans through this. 
and I just like I catch the jump, I hit the fence, and it just literally goes upside down. Uh, super slow mo here. It just <laughs> unbelievable. It's the only time I've ever seen uh, a car reset on this. Uh, I think I, I think there's an assist for that, but I turned off car resets. So turning upside down will reset the car. All right. Hopefully you found that helpful. Hopefully now you have a relatively easy way to go and grind yourself some money so you can buy whatever car you want without having to spend real world money on microtransactions. If you guys enjoyed that video and found it helpful, leave me a like. If you guys like paying real money for cars or like just earning the money naturally by playing for hours and hours, you can, okay. Subscribe if you're not already a minion so you can become one and I'll see you guys in the next one.